Welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Dave Nicholson and I am delighted to welcome back to the CUBE, CUBE veteran, Hen Goldberg, VP of Engineering from Google. Hen, welcome back to the CUBE. Hey Dave, super happy to be here. Absolutely delighted to have you here. Um, let's dive right into this conversation. There was a, there was a blog post this week uh, talking about Google Cloud putting a lot of weight behind this idea of principles for software development. What are those principles and why are they important? The three principles that we put in that blog post is open, easy, and transformative. And I think what's really important to recognize with those three principles that those are not new principles, uh, not for Google Cloud and definitely not uh, for me. I've joined Google about a little bit over five years ago right when just Kubernetes started to lead Kubernetes and uh, Google Kubernetes engine team. And we immediately recognized, right, and the idea of open and the importance of flexibility and choice is a found foundation to the idea of Kubernetes and portability workloads. But pretty early on, it was clear that it's not enough just to have portability and flexibility because it creates a lot of complexity. So how can we still have that without creating a trade-off or tension for the, our customers. So really making things sure that everything is also easy. You know, and one of the things I, I used, I like to say, it's not just portability of workloads, but also portability of skills. And you achieve that through consistent experience, right? A lot of automation. And when you bring all of those things together, what I love about, you know, Google Cloud is that, you know, I'm an, I'm an infrastructure person. I've always been infrastructure person. And what excites me the most is seeing others take this innovation and, and really empower developers to make amazing or, or you know, unique ideas a reality. And that's really the foundation principles for Google Cloud. So how does that translate into, from a customer perspective? So I will just you know, start with some um, customer examples, right, starting from, from their perspective. So when we think about uh, open, this is actually part of the our customers' cloud strategy, right? You say cloud, you immediately think only about a public cloud. But from our customer perspective, right, they, they think about public clouds, right? Most of them have more than one cloud, uh, but they also think about their private cloud, you know, IoT, Edge, uh, and having that openness and flexibility to choose where they can run their workload is critical. It's critical for them. Uh, you know, what I hear mostly is, of course, innovation, uh, managing cost, uh, and also making sure that they are not locked out of innovation that happens, for example, in any cloud or, or somewhere else. So that's a really a key, um, consideration for our customers when they think about their cloud strategy. The second thing that open matters is that it's really hard to hire talent that is uh, expert and has the right skills. And we see that by using and leveraging open source technologies, it actually makes it easier uh, to our customers uh, to hire the best talent there is in the industry. Now, in one of the previous Google Cloud Next sessions, we had the uh, Labla, for example, which is the, the biggest grocer in Canada. And you know, we were joking on, st on stage that even though uh, they are hiring for a grocery uh, shop, they still can hire the best talent because they are using the best technologies out there in, in the industry. So that's one. If we think about the importance of easy, I will just call out uh, Western Digital that we've just announced how they decided to standardize uh, on Anthos for their cloud strategy, right? Both, of course, Google Cloud Platform, but on-prem and the edge. And for them, what's important is that when they have all of the, their amazing developers and operators, how can they provide them rich experience, right? We don't want our developers or operators to spend time on things that can be automated or managed by others. Uh, so having a smooth, intuitive experience is really critical. Uh, and we, we've been announcing some uh, new stuff like uh, 
a Google Cloud Deploy uh, that really integrates the entire experience, especially integration for managing uh, or de deploying directly to Google Kubernetes Engine. And of course, one of my favorite is GKE Autopilot, which really takes all the goodness with Kubernetes and automatically managing it. And then transformative, this is like what I said before, unleashing innovation. Uh, we see Wendy's, for example, right? They want to actually have AI machine learning uh, at runtime uh, at their uh, branches, which will allow them to create a new experience for their customers. So this is how you know we see customers uh, really appreciate uh, these three principles. So whenever the subject of uh, Kubernetes and Google comes up, uh, we have to talk Anthos. We're now into what year three of uh, Anthos. Uh, mm -hmm. How has adoption looked? What's what's the latest on that front? Awesome. So adoption has been really great. Uh, we actually have been seeing a 500% growth uh, on the end of Q2 of year over year. And it's important, you know, to mention that the journey with Anthos is not something new, but something that we have. Uh, built with our customers when they really love the experience they have on GCP, but needed to innovate elsewhere and not just uh, on Google Cloud. So we've been seeing that, uh, you know, I mentioned the Western Digital, uh, blah, blah, uh, and Wendy's. We also have customers like MLB, uh, which is really exciting how they've changed the entire fans experience using Anthos. And for them, again, it was both the easy part, right? How can I deal with that complexity of having compute and storage everywhere in every one of the uh, stadiums, but also how can I use AI and machine learning, which is unique to Google Cloud, in order to create unique experiences for the fans at real time, of course. Yeah, now you've, you've touched on this a bit already. Um, if you had to if you thought about someone reviewing Anthos, their Anthos experience, because we're in the midst of people uh, adopting Anthos and becoming uh, new to Anthos at this point, what does a delighted customer's response sound like to you? What is that, what is that Yelp review that they would write <laughs> if they were telling people, we, we doubled down on Anthos and we are thrilled because Fill in the blank for us then. The first thing that comes to mind is that it uh, works everywhere and the uh, developer experience that comes with it, right? So we have, of course, the platform and the infrastructure, but where Anthos really shine is that experience on top, thinking about our developers and operators that can really work in every environment without paying too much attention to that and just having that intuitive uh, experience, right? If you go to the uh, Google Cloud Console, you'll see all your clusters. A and now we're actually also going to add your VMs into that view. And you can use tools like Anthos Config Managers and Anthos Service Mesh to manage your security posture or the configuration in all of those uh, environments. So we hear a lot about multi-cloud. Multi-cloud yeah. is fantastic, but it sounds like dealing with the complexity associated with multi-cloud is something that Anthos definitely helps with. Yes. You know, Google is best with complexity at scale. <laughs> uh, we've been running containers and really large environments for many years. And some of those uh, principles really, you know, uh, have been uh, fundamental to the way we've uh, started with Kubernetes. So the, the idea of uh, the declarative intent and automation is really critical in managing large environment and high complexity, right? Because in, in those environments, a lot of things can change, but with a, the declarative approach, you don't have to anticipate everything that is going to change, but you need to know what is your desired state. And that's really one way that uh, Anthos is leveraging the Kubernetes primitives and those uh, ideas to manage different type of environment. In addition to that, it's actually really adding that layer that I talked about before uh, around the easy. Can I make sure that my tools, right, if it's, for example, a cloud a hybrid build or cloud deploy or Anto Service Mesh or Anto's Config Manager, can I make sure that this UI, the CLI, the API will be consistent in all of those environments? Can I view 
in one place all of my clusters, all of my applications. And this is really where uh, Anthos shines. So the Cloud Native Foundation had a, had a get together at the same time as, as uh, Google Cloud Next. And there's been a lot of discussion around topics like security. Um, yeah. I'd just like to get your thoughts on you know, what, what's at the forefront of your mind uh, working in engineering at Google, working in this world where people are deploying Anthos, working in a world where uh, in a multi-cloud environment, you don't necessarily have control as vice president of engineering at Google over what's happening in these other clouds. So what are some of the things that are at the front of your mind? Is security one of them? What are your thoughts? Security is top of mind, uh, similar to all of our customers and definitely internally. And uh, there are many things that we are very um, worried about or create some risk. You know, we've just uh, um, started talking about the secure uh, software supply chain, right? By building with open source, how can we make sure that everything is secure, right? And we know what uh, is the contribution that's from the software that we are delivering. Uh, how can we make sure that the security posture is portable, right? We talked about workloads portability. We talked about um, skills portability and experience, but really I think the next phase for us as an industry is to think about security posture portability. Can I really apply the same policy everywhere and still make sure that I have the right controls in place, which will have to be different, depends on the environment, uh, and to make sure that that really is the case. So lots of work uh, around that. And again, you know, talking about the other things we talked about, we talked about open and flexibility. How can you make sure that it's easy? Uh, one of the areas that uh, we are very excited about is really around uh, uh, binary authorization, for example. So when you use our tools like Cloud Build, Cloud Depo Deploy, Artifact uh, Registry, uh, you can get your container images, images automatically scanned for vulnerabilities. And tools like Anto Service Mesh, which allows you to actually manage your security posture traffic uh, management, who can access what without doing any changes to your applications. Fantastic stuff. As we, as we wrap up our time here, do you have any final thoughts on the direction of cloud, where we are in the adoption curve? You know, by, by some estimates, something like 75% of IT is still happening on premises. Uh, there have been some announcements coming out of Cloud Next uh, regarding the ability to run all sorts of Google goodness on premises. Yeah. So uh, we, we seem to all be acknowledging that we're going to be in a, a bit of a hybrid world in addition to a multi-cloud moving forward, multi-cloud world moving forward. Um, do you want to place any bets on, uh, on when we'll hit the 50-50 mark or the 25% on-premises, 75% cloud mark? What do you think? Yeah, I'm not a best gambler, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but I do have a thought about that. I think what's interesting is that customers started to talk, you know, a few years back, it was, hey, I have my on-prem environment and I have the cloud. How can they, these two work together? And now what we see our customers talking, you know, their on-premises, their edge is part of their cloud strategy. It's not separated. And I think this is what we'll see more and more of. Right, regardless if it is your private cloud, your public cloud, your edge, we would like to have a cloud-like experience in that environment and consistency. And of course, we would love to leverage all the goodness of the cloud, if it's like machine learning, AI, and other capabilities, automation, everywhere we go. So I think this is the biggest change uh, we're starting to see. And in addition to that, I think we will see Today, everybody are already multi-cloud, right? If it's through acquisitions, um, just because of a bottom-up uh, culture, you know, people choose different services. And I expect you will see more strategic thinking about our mu customers' multi-cloud strategy. Where do I deploy my workloads? What are the benefits? Uh, if it's latency, if it's uh, specific services that are available, maybe cost, we'll see are the customers becoming more intentional about that? And this is really exciting. Well, Han, amazing insights. It's obvious why you're a CUBE veteran. It's obvious why we seek you out for your counsel and guidance on a variety of subjects. Thank you so much for spending time 
with us today in this CUBE conversation. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Until next time, I'm Dave Nicholson. Thanks for joining.